I mean, what's it going to cost Tamron to actually add this to their lens? It's a auto. So for us small time YouTube creators, we're often late to the party regarding lens or gear reviews. And our videos are often like finding a needle in a haystack. Nonetheless, I'm going to give you my honest opinion, likes and dislikes regarding this lens. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly whether the G2 is going to be worth your time spending the extra cash on version 2 of this lens. And the lens that I'm referring to is none other than the 70 to 180. Tamron G1. So in terms of build quality, uh, this lens I picked up used in a, I would say, fair to good condition. Uh, when I got, got the lens for the first time, what I have noticed was this rubber over here was starting to lift off uh, from, from the body itself. Uh, and I've noticed that on my, my Fuji 16 to 55 as well. But I've taken upon myself and what I did was I actually uh, found a video that I'll link up over here. I've actually taken the rubber grip off and I put it in a, you guys are going to laugh, I put it in an oven at approximately 200 degrees Celsius for approximately 10 minutes. And that has seemed to solve my issue with this lens. So... On that front, I'm happy with the result there, um, but let's get back to build quality. It has a metal lens mount and it also has a little gasket. Um, so it's got a bit of sealing at the mount side. Um, it has a 67 millimeter filter thread. So this pairs well with the 28 to 75 uh, that I've got as well as the 20 millimeter 2.8. They all got the same 27 millimeter filter thread. The zoom ring feels quite smooth compared to my 70 to 300 as well as this, the, 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 the focus ring. Um, it feels much more smoother than my 28 to 75 and my 70 to 300. The 70 to 300 has this little kind of scratchiness when rotating the manual focus ring. Other than that, apparently it's weather sealed. It's got apparently seven weather sealed rings right through the lens. And therefore, when actually looking at my 20 millimeter 2.8, Compared to Voltrox's 20mm 2.8, which is not weather sealed, I actually came across a post on Facebook where the guy had some weather sealing issues on his 20mm 2.8 Voltrox lens. There was some kind of mist on the lens or inside of the lens. And therefore, I'm actually very happy that even with my 20mm 2.8, it's also weather sealed. So in terms of build quality for me, I don't see any major issues other than the zoom ring on this the rubber gasket if they could just use you know a better type of of zoom ring so if you're purchasing one of this use just look out for that but like i said it is actually an easy fix it seems well built and it feels solid and weighty in my hands uh, compared to my 70 to 300 which is a longer lens also 767 millimeter diameter obviously the glass in this one is way better and therefore obviously the weight okay, now let's talk about the features and the functions of this lens. This lens has no USB-C update port, unlike your generation twos of your 28 to 75 and your G2 in this version, it has a, uh, a port. This one, you've got to update it through the camera body. Uh, apparently, I think there was one or two updates for this lens. Then also it has a little switch over here. And this switch is just there to basically stop the zoom ring from going further than 70 so for example you know you've got it hanging off your camera body and you don't want it to zoom creep that's what that is for and even with it off i don't have any issues with regarding a zoom creep and then this lens also does not have any form of autofocus manual focus switch now for me the biggest gripe about this lens is that aspect of this lens i mean what's it gonna cost Tamron to actually add this to their lens. It's an autofocus, manual focus switch. How simple could it be? For me personally, in video, I prefer having this option on my body. And on this Tamron, they don't have it. With the new G2s, they've obviously added it in. But I don't see why they actually omitted to put a autofocus, manual focus switch on these older lenses, even on the 20mm 2.8 no autofocus manual focus switch if you look at the 17 to 70s 
uh, it's a bare bones lens. Now, it doesn't affect the optical quality of this lens by any means, but for me personally, in terms of usability, it's not a deal breaker for me. However, I would prefer, if even their buttons, I don't want their buttons, just put an autofocus AM MF switch on the body so you don't have to deep dive into the function menu of the camera to actually get to this uh, feature. So in terms of autofocus, the guy that I purchased this lens from, it was quite a reluctant sale. Having said that, he did mention that he had some autofocus uh, issues in continuous for photography in lower light scenarios. Now, I've had this lens for a couple of weeks now, and in my personal opinion, in the use cases for me, I haven't seen any, any continuous autofocus issues with this lens. If I compare to my 28 to 75 with autofocus continuous, whether it be photo or video, or photo for that matter, I don't see any major difference between those two. And we all know the 28 to 75 G2 has brilliant autofocus. But having said that, even with my 28 to 75, I have noticed in very rare instances in lower light scenarios where your ISO is a bit higher, there has been a bit of hunting with the 28 to 75. And I would presume the same would happen with a lens that is slightly older than the 28 to 75 G2. So to me, image quality is where this lens shines the most, where that 70 millimeter, where that 100 millimeter, where that 180 millimeter at 2.8, this lens produces an image for me, unlike any of my other lenses. Um, it has to me, it has a very cinematic look. I don't know how to explain it, but the, the, the image or the file seems very thick um, it seems very thick and not overly sharpened uh, like your more sterile lenses like the 28 to 75 I know with the 28 to 75 you know it gives me a more sterile very clean very pure look with this lens it produces a bit more to the warmer side for me and like I said the image it gives me is, it's more it's, it's almost like it's got a, a thicker file um, that's the best way that I can explain it you know the fall off from in focus to out of focus it's you know some images you get where you take a f 1.4 lens and you shoot it at f 1.4 and the, the 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 model on that image or the in focus area of that image is it's almost as if it's been pasted like you know on adobe photoshop um over sharpened lenses tend to have that look and if you push the sharpness too far, it exaggerates it a bit more. But with this lens, uh, you know, it blends in nicely foreground to background. The fall off is very smooth. Like I said, it produces a nice thick file that is very pleasing to my eye. And therefore, for me, this lens produces, a, 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 like I said earlier, a cinematic look. And not that it's not sharp, it has Plenty of detail, uh, pl plenty of contrast, but it's not overly sharp. So in terms of image quality, for me, this lens, it produces a very natural looking image. And overall, there's, for me, there's no complaints in terms of image quality. It only has pros in terms of image quality. You know, some has said that corner sharpness at, at 70 millimeter or whatever, uh, you know, falls off a bit. For me personally, I don't even look at uh, uh, corner image quality. I'm not a landscape photographer. Um, I don't look at chromatic aberration. I don't look at loca. Uh, those things don't bother me. I look at the overall image and for me that is more important. Like I said, this lens produces a nice thick file, a nice cinematic look, a beautiful fall off, and that is more than enough for a lens to stay in my kit. So just quickly, final conclusion on this lens. It's an obvious choice if you can afford the G2 simply because it has image stabilizer. I think for me that's the only benefit of the G2 over this particular lens is the image stabilizer. I honestly don't see how the image quality could top this lens um, besides from being a sharper lens and like I said it's not what I'm looking for in a lens. However, if you can afford the G2, go by all means go for the G2. But getting this lens used on the used market currently um, comes in way less than the G2. 
and in my personal opinion with the I'm using I've been using this mostly on the A7C and for me even at 180 millimeter even my 70 to 300 on the A7C on uh, with the image stabilizer of the A7C for me personally I don't have any gripes it works perfectly fine for me whether photo or video so if you can afford the G2 by all means go for it however I can say if you're going to get this at a good price don't sleep on this one it's a fantastic lens thanks for watching guys if there's any comments hit me down below if not subscribe to the channel it really helps with the algorithm thanks for watching peace out till the next one